Hey what's up guys, Sam here and today I've got something interesting uh, at least it's interesting to me and that is how to calculate your camera's crop factor so I'm pretty sure a lot of people understand what crop factor is but I think a lot of people don't know how that number 1x, uh, 1.5x, 1.6x is actually derived from your camera sensor uh, there is a little bit of math that is involved but it's not too difficult so if you're interested in that and you don't want to listen to this intro part you can just check, uh, check out the timestamps in the show notes below and you can just go straight to it but before we start I do want to talk about why understanding how to calculate your crop factor is important so this uh, topic came about because i was posting about the 0.71x adapter on the canon the speed booster basically uh, and how it changes the canon c70 super 35 field of view to more of a full frame i was talking about how the c70 has a crop factor of 1.5 and somebody corrected me and said oh uh, but canon camera canon crop sensor cameras are 1.6x and yes that is true canon at least their standard for APS-C crop sensor cameras are 1.6 but because this is a Super 35, it's not really an APS-C sensor, this is uh, different a little bit but this is a 1.5x and I want to show you how I know that and that is basically calculating it from the sensor itself. So the one thing that I see online is people tend to say like, oh I don't like to talk about all these technical things because photography is an art, photography is supposed to be uh, expression and things like that. However, just like every other painter, a mechanic, you need to know your tools to achieve your vision. Understanding, I think as photographers, we need to be fully uh, immersed from acquisition. We need to be fully immersed in the tools. We need to be fully immersed in the gear and the execution and the editing. Every single aspect or facet of photography, we do need to understand because I think that's how it makes you a much more refined photographer. It helps you understand that, hey, I'm using a specific gear for a specific reason. I understand how everything works because that's how I am able to achieve the vision that I have. So when people are saying like, oh, I don't, I don't care about gear, I don't care about like the theory and the techniques, I think that's a very wrong way of approaching it. If you look at any good cinematographer, you look on a film set, they're using numbers. They use numbers to quantify things because there's always a standard and it helps them function efficiently and it helps them understand that the gear that they're using uh, and how it helps them achieve the look that they're going for. And that's why understanding crop factor, understanding how you derive crop factor is important. And, and that's why I'm a big advocate of not just focusing on the creative parts as well, but also the technical side of it, the gear portion of it, because everything comes together uh, as a whole to create an image. So let's not waste any more time, let's just jump straight into the maths. Okay, hey, what's up guys? So now I'm gonna show you how you actually calculate uh, the crop factor. So we're gonna be using this formula and it might look familiar, but it looks like this. It's A square plus B square equals C square. However, if I put it this way, square root of A square plus B square, suddenly it's like, hey, wait a minute, I've seen this before. I mean, class, this is the uh, Pythagorean theorem. So how we find crop factor is we are actually gonna be using C of full frame divided by C of whatever camera that you're looking for, be it like a Fuji, Canon, Panasonic, uh, it doesn't matter. So this is how we're going to find the value of the crop factor. But first, we obviously got to find C. Now, the great thing about uh, full frame, it is a constant. So regardless of whatever camera brand you're using, the value is going to be the same. I'm going to bring out my calculator right here. Shout out if you're from Monash, you're from the best uni in the world. So there are a few values that we need to find out first. Now, as we all understand, this a sensor size is, oops, sorry. Your sensor size is a rectangle and you have the height and you have the width. So the way we're actually using this formula is we're actually looking for the diagonal oh my god i have not written in a long time i'm so sorry diagonal of the rectangle so this is what we're going to be find, uh, looking for and so you basically need the two values you need the height and the width the value is a 36 millimeters by 24 mil right so this is the values and all we have to do is we just have to input them inside this so let's look at this c um equals square root of a, a or b, it doesn't matter. It could be 36 square plus 24 square. So we bring up our calculator right here is we type 36 square, four square equals 100, uh, 1872 and we just square root the answer 
and we get this we get um 43.267 but we're just going to round it up to two numbers so 43.27 this is going to be the diagonal of a full frame sensor and, the, and so now we got to figure out the x camera that we're looking for so what we're doing is we're looking for the crop factor of the c70 so and the sensor size what we're doing this is 26 mil by 13.8 obviously i didn't actually calculate the sensor uh, but this is given by Canon. So we already have our values. We already have our values right here. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to input them in. Plus 13.8 square. And square root of that answer is 29.43 or 44. So we want to find the crop factor of the C70, which is obviously full frame. Uh, which is this value right here 43.27 divided by 29.44 so if we input that into our calculator 27 divided by 29.44 we get a 1.469 which is a 1.5 times crop factor so the sensor size of the Canon M6 Mark II is 2.3 by 14.9 so basically we're just going to input that into our formula 82 and then if we just take our full frame uh, value which is divided by answer we get uh, a crop factor of 1.6 and that's how we do it so the fuji xt4 has a sensor size of 23.5 by 15.6 so if we input that into our calculator crop factor of 1.5 which is closer to what most of the common uh, common crop factors are for APS-C. even the same with like the sony a6500 uh the the Nikon Z50, the Nikon D5300, uh, 5, if I'm not mistaken. You can go home and do the calculations yourself, but it just shows you that the common crop factor of APS-C size camera sensors are actually 1.5. So you're actually going to be cropping in a little bit more on Canon crop sensors compared to any other camera that you use out there that uses an APS-C. And if you look at a lot of charts, you see there's APS-C, and then there's APS-C uh, bracket Canon. So that's pretty interesting for me. Now I wanna go in the opposite reverse and actually look at what happens if we use this and put it into medium format, which is bigger than um, bigger than full frame. Let's look at a more recent medium format camera. This is the GFX uh, 100, which is by Fuji. Its sensor size is 43.8 by 32.9 square plus 32.9 square square root of 43.27 divided by answer and we get a crop factor of 0 0.79 so the Hasselblad X1D2 also has the same uh, dimensions as the medium format for uh, Fuji but let's look at another another one which is the Pentax uh, 645Z if I'm not mistaken this has a value of 44 by 33 55 and 43.27 divided by answer is gives you a crop factor of 0 0.9 so something interesting that I want to actually take a look at is actually looking at the physical negatives of a actual uh, medium format film camera this is taken from the uh, Mamiya RB67. So this is the size of the actual uh, medium format negative and if we take a look at like it compared to uh, full frame which is this uh, my 1DX you see that it it covers the entire uh, what do you call this the entire lens mount and I want to know what the crop factor of this is whether it's the same. So the size of the RB67 is uh, 56 mil times 68 uh, 68 millimeters so what we do is we type a 0 0.5 times crop factor 
And this is actually interesting for me because full frame has actually remained the same across even from a 35mm uh, film, which is exactly the same as 36 by 24 But medium format has actually become smaller. Uh, however, this is just one example because the RB67 is a pretty large negative. But if you're interested in doing your own research, just go back, try and measure how big this negative is or just look online and you will find your crop factor depending on uh, what camera you use. So as you can see, it wasn't that complicated. You've already used this formula in uh, when you were studying and a lot of people were like, oh, all these things, uh, why, why would they? We're not ever going to use this in real life. And hey, you know what? I thought the same thing. I never thought that Pythor... Pyth Never thought that the Pythag, Pyth oh, you, you the, the formula was going to be used in like my my day to day job as a photographer. But hey, you know what? Here we are. Really simple, really fun, and it's just something that to broaden your perspective as a photographer, understanding like the theoretical concepts behind it, how your gear functions in a certain way, and how people you know how engineers de derive all these numbers is going to help you as a photographer in understanding your gear and ultimately helping you get a better shot. But if anything, if it doesn't help, it's just fun to know and then fun to brag with your uh, photographer friends. So yeah, uh, thank you guys so much. If you found this interesting, do let me know. I would love to do more of these like quirky things that I, because I, I'm personally really interested in all these kind of things. I read up not just about like photo stories, but also like th these, these, these mundane, boring stuff because these interest me. I love the entire aspect of photography from like the how cameras are made to like the final prints and things like that. I love everything about photography and filmmaking uh, and that's why I just love reading stuff like this and I, I, I'm, I'm more than happy to share more about this. So yeah, uh, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. If you have any questions, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and be more than happy to help you out. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.